you're listening to the No Limits Radio Show on the Vets on Media Network. All right, welcome, welcome back. back. So in studio, we have Sherry Sue Fisher, who's the author of Timer Diet. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. So tell us what the premise of this diet is, because I have been on a thousand diets that I start, I start out great, I fail miserably, they're complicated, they don't work. I've got a, a, a range of clothes in my closet because of the yo-yo that I'm constantly... We've talked about this and you were supposed to get rid of those, remember? Yeah, I got half of them out. Okay. You should no longer have the 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 range, you know, of of sizes. Girl you know, fight. The, All right. The size that you wore when you were a freshman in high school, you can get rid of that now, honey. <laughs> just well, just get rid. It can I, happen. I do want to weigh in on that topic though, because okay, so the thing with the clothes is that there is something that you really want to do with it. I don't want to spoil it for the readers because it's in the last chapter that now that you've lost the weight, it's a really cool thing. It's not destructive. It's not your normal thought of what you would do with your clothes, but uh, it, it, was, it was a really cool thing that I did, and it's in Chapter 9. But you do want to hold on to your clothes until you have found your comfort weight but you don't want them in your closet. And that is in chapter four where I talk about before you start. Mm -hmm. You want to have only the clothes that you know you can walk into your closet and you can look good and sexy and feel good. All the other clothes, box them up, take them out of sight, and as you get into the smaller clothes, then you trade the the other clothes for the new clothes that you do fit in. But nothing will sabotage your self-esteem more than trying on clothes that you do not fit into. So put them away. Oh, I know not to try them on. I walk in, well, I look don't at, even look at I look them. at one side. <laughs> yeah. I have like she likes to look at them. No, 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 that'll They're just, pretty. That'll make you sad. But they don't, and they do. It don't. makes me sad. Yeah. When I when I walk into my closet, I I have this little section, all of this fits me. I removed like one half of the clothes and then the other half they're still there. It just it makes me so sad to take them out. <laughs> well, just I love box it. them up. You're not going to do anything with them. And then once you get to chapter nine and you find out what the, you are going to do with them, you will be actually it, you'll, you will be so excited. Okay, so uh, let's let's get into how the timer diet works. Well, basically, the timer diet works by creating well-balanced meals, which includes dietary fat, which gets a bad rap, but it's so important for your diet to have dietary fat, protein, and carbohydrates every time you eat, whether it's a regular meal or a mini meal. I call snacks mini meals. And then you also want to incorporate foods that you love. And what I found when I was looking at diets in the past, and I tried diets before, and they all failed, and... Um, they, maybe they worked for a while, but then after a while they didn't, you know, and it's like you go to make something and you didn't have that one ingredient and sometimes you'd eat what they'd say and it would be too full or sometimes not enough. And so I realized that this person is writing this book and they're making it seem like I should eat exactly what they say, but they're selling the same book to a million people. And how is it possible that those million people should eat exactly this amount of food and exactly this and this time. And I was like, that's not possible. Sure. So, so what I did is I started journaling what I felt like after I ate and I started to listen to my body and I realized when I was at the point of satisfaction because you want to shrink your stomach. That, that's all that losing weight is, is about limiting the amount of food that you can put in and that's by shrinking your stomach. And the only way to do that is to not overeat. Overeating you know, makes your stomach bigger, you need more food, you don't go in trouble. Sure. And, and I like that. I like not having a, a cookie cutter type diet. And and I do want to say, I, I know that we've talked about diets, fitness, health a lot. And, um, you know, we, we, we get a lot of different views on how this works. And I think it's really good that we do share all of these different views because one way of doing it may not work for everyone. Right. And when you have control of your body and your fitness and your confidence, all that radiates into all areas of your life. So we will continue to do this topic. The, and the one thing that I do like about you know your concept with the the timer diet is you know I read a little bit I downloaded your book on my oh, Kindle um, so I didn't have a lot of time to to read but I did read some some stuff um, but what I like is it's 
and I kind of don't like that you call it a timer diet, <laughs> but because I don't feel like it's a diet. You know, there's right. been two people that I've spoke to. One is Famisha, you know, who we're now training with, and um, you know, and her concept is, sound is very similar to this, even though we didn't kind of go into in detail because you know she's more fitness, but she talks about what she eats. It's not really a diet. It's more you just have to change your habits of eating. You know, we're used to. I know when. I was raised, you get up in the morning, you have your cereal because you've got to go to school and both my parents worked. So, you know, you have your cereal, you eat your horrible lunch, you know, that the, that the school food su supplies. If Ken, if you're listening, let's work on school foods too. <laughs> um, you have that and then you come home and, and we always had a, a meat, a vegetable and a potato. And then you had some dessert before you went to bed. You know, so that's kind of how I was raised. And what I realized is it's really not very... <laughs> effective you know because right. you're so hungry when you sit down for that dinner that you just eat a lot you know um, versus eating I like the thing of eating small things many times a day so you're really never hungry and never stuffed right at exactly. the same time exactly and that's what I like about your system and one of the things you brought up is that cereal has become the mainstay for breakfast although if you look at the side nutrition label it says that it's almost 80% if not more carbohydrates so you're getting way too much carbohydrates in the morning so that's not the best way to start your breakfast well let's let's talk a little bit about what you know a, a day in the life might look like but first I want to clarify is the timer diet about the amount of time that you're eating that you're consuming food or is the timer diet about the amount of time between meals? Right. Well, the timer diet, uh, it actually got the name timer just by default because I had a very long name that didn't make sense in, <laughs> for marketability. <laughs> so anyway, I was uh, exercising, doing some leg lifts, and I used a timer um, because I didn't like to count my reps. I wanted to watch TV or listen to music, and so I was using my timer. And I'm like, timer, oh, that's it. it. It's the timer diet because I also was setting my computer uh, t timer to find out, okay, check in with yourself. Are you hungry yet? And it actually would pop up every couple of hours. Are you hungry yet? Because I didn't want to let myself get too hungry. So I didn't actually define how often I would eat or the intervals, I would check in with myself and say, are you hungry yet? And if I wasn't, I'd put it on snooze and, you know, check in maybe a half hour later or something like that. But it was all about the timer when it came to working out and when to eat. So, so, are so you, the timer is to remind you, are you hungry? And then check in with your body. Yeah. Correct. Right. Because sometimes, I mean, you would not believe how many times I hear somebody say, oh, I have not eaten all day. And they literally mean they have not eaten all day. And they're not hungry. Because their metabolism is shut down. So that's a bad thing. That's a very bad thing. Right. You have to fuel your body. And you know when you were talking about diet, you know, I wish it hadn't have been diet. I do have a chapter of why diets don't work and how I ended up with the word diet. But since then, I actually looked up the definition of diet. And I love the second definition. And it's called Habitual nourishment. Oh, yeah. Really? Yes. I so see. I actually, I really like that. You know, I. It's I, funny that none of us have known that, and I we've know. been on a hundred diets, and none of us <laughs> right. have looked up in Webster what the definition of a diet is. <laughs> Whew, I'm glad you came in today. I wish I'd have known that when I wrote the book. <laughs> anyway, That's no, awesome. I, I actually just looked it up for a blog that I was writing, and um, I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna look it up, and I saw that definition I'm like that makes sense I think one of the things that's really good that we talked about um, you know this listen checking in with your body listening to your body I think all too often we just go into well it's that time of the day I should be eating something now mm -hmm. and not stopping to say am I hungry like when I'm sick it's like okay I gotta eat everything like I'm not even hungry I don't want to eat but I'm sick so I, I should be eating I should be you know, yeah. and, and not doing that check-in. Also emotional eating, you know, why am I eating? Am I, am right. I happy? Am I sad? I'm a am bored I... eater. I'm not an emotional one, but if I'm bored, I'm eating. I have noticed for myself that when I'm doing bored eating, it's because I didn't get enough crunch in the meal before. Oh. See, that's a, you know, okay. 
I have a real challenge with, we were, actually when we went to the gym or boot camp today, Michelle was sharing about how she's lost five pounds this mm -hmm. past week, and which I'm awesome. excited yeah. for you. I'm really excited. Jealous. You know, I don't, and I don't really feel like I've lost that, but I fit in a pair of jeans that I bought about six months ago, and I knew they were a little tight, but I loved them so much. I have them on, but I'm like, I love them so much. I'm going to buy them. So I fit in them. So I, I yes. So as you were going through what you ate throughout the day, yeah. salad by itself, I feel like if I have just a salad, I'm not getting, you know, you talked about crunch. I feel like substance. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I have to have carbs, but everything they, they, mm -hmm. they say right. is that you're, you're supposed to stay away from carbs. No, it's certain carbs. It's not all carbs, right? Am I right? Well, that's not the approach that I take. I take a well-balanced approach. Okay. So it's uh, no more than double, no less than half, and it's based on the grams. So if you go to your dietary fat, and let's just say it's five, then you, no more than double would mean that your carbs and your protein would be no more than 10. No less than half means that the carbs and the protein would be no less than two and a half or so. But that's a guideline just you know, to help you read a label faster. Looking at your website, I see wine. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, see yes. cheese. I see me. I'm like, okay, wine. I, I can do this. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can yeah. do this. Diet. So you, on the timer diet, you do have wine? Right. In fact, I explained to you how to drink your alcohol. So if you're going to have alcohol, you need to consider that your carbs and you need to have dietary fat and protein, which cheese is the perfect pairing to wine. But there's other things that you can have. You can also have like sushi, um, even buffalo wings without the sauce. The sauces have the sugars, so that's what you would stay away from. So if you're going to have wine or alcohol, Consider that your carbs and make sure you have dietary fat and protein with it. What is your background? Uh, my background is someone that has been on and off diets, up and down losing weight. I gained a little over 30 pounds in two years, like the blink of an eye, a lot of stress going on with my life. I own business. And uh, I just decided that I was getting ready to turn 47. And that was five years ago, so I'm 51 now. And I was just like, this is it. I'm going to lose the weight and I'm going to keep it off. I'm going to, that was the most important thing to me because I was like, I'm not going to go through all the effort of losing the weight and just to deal with this again in another year or two. I can't, I can't keep doing it. I'm done with it. And I got to say, so, so you don't have a background as a, uh, a dietitian. No. I, I like this and I'm going to tell you why, because the fact that you've been there, done that and this worked for you. You created this. This worked for you. And now you're getting it out there and you're sharing. Right. To me, I love that because that, to me, I feel like, okay, this is a, a regular person who did it. Yeah. I can do this. And not over, not only, let's take away the, the, that this is about healthy eating. I'm going to call it healthy eating. Or what, what, what's the definition again? Habitual nourishment. Habitual let's talk, we're, we're going to step away from the habitual nourishment for a second. <laughs> and what I love about it is that so many people feel like they go into this field, whether it's whatever it is, and if it's not working for them, they feel like they've failed. Right. What I feel like your story shows is when you find that thing that you're passionate about, then it'll be a success. And yeah. and that's what I love about it is that, you know, who cares if you don't have a degree or that you have a degree or don't have a degree in it's the dietary, street, whatever. It's, it's the street cred. You've yeah. been there, you've done been that. Been there, you've, you've done it, it. You know, and that's what I love. There's a lot of great stuff on the website. Um, the journals, so talk a little bit about the journals and, and how how that came about and why, why you have on there. Like people can actually, you can go to the website, timerdiet.com. There's journals you can download. Oh, yes. They're There's, free. They're no obligation. Just go ahead and... Diet you know. concept. I mean, you have... I Just to step away from the uh, habitual nourishment for a second. Looking at your... <laughs> <laughs> she uh, sees carbs. You have no idea how happy this girl is right now. She's like, carbs. I, I love your website. Thank you. I love how visual it is. I love also, from a technical standpoint... The social media that oh, you yes. have there. I have gotten into social media quite a bit in the last. And six you months. are killing it in social media. I <laughs> was really impressed when I looked at all of your stuff. I was like, 
She's kicking our ass. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some new followers this week that I'm very, very surprised with. Well, happy good about. job. That's awesome. So let me ask you this. You say to give a little bit, there are some rules uh -huh. to, you know, this working. Yeah. Um, you say to eat breakfast within an hour and a half of being up. And I understand that because it, it gets you going, you know, right. and your metabolism started. So you have to do that. Now, you say preferably an egg. Yes. Why an egg? I just think the egg is the best way to start out a breakfast. It's just, it's got dietary fat and protein. That way you can add a little bit of fruit, some toast, you know, and you've got a complete well-balanced meal from the get-go. And the other thing is that the egg is just the mainstay for breakfast that it used to be. I mean, that is how we used to start our breakfast, and we were really a lot more leaner back then. Mm -hmm. So can that be um, just the egg white? No. Well, <laughs> yeah, she's having a problem with the egg I thing, really, too. I really, eggs just gross me out. You don't like eggs? I do well, not like eggs. What about a hard-boiled egg? Oh, as long as I can put salt on it. Like, yeah, a works. lot of salt. <laughs> no, put some pepper. Try pepper instead. All right, I will try. Try a hard-boiled egg with pepper. Okay, I'll try it. Well, there's other things that you can have for breakfast. Okay, so what would be you a know, substitution? Uh, you know, actually, you can have almost anything for breakfast. You can have fish. In fact, I've had fish. Okay. No well, fish. Let's, let's back into what do you <laughs> Now you know why no diet has ever worked for Christina. <laughs> no, this is actually perfect. This is perfect because this is the... The way that it's meant is to pick foods that you like. So rather than me telling you... I what, like yogurt. Okay. I like cheese. Okay. I like oatmeal. Those would be things that for breakfast I would I would like to have. Okay, so here, uh, for your yogurt, okay. uh, do you do the Greek non-fat yogurt? Or With the pineapple Greek? in the bottom. With yeah. the pineapple in yeah, the bottom. Yeah, okay. That. So what you would want to do is you'd want to have plain yogurt. Pick the fruit that you like, whether it's pineapple, raspberries, whatever it is that you like. Add that manually, fresh, and then add either walnuts or almonds to it. Okay. Okay. All right. So then let's go to your oatmeal. You like oatmeal, right? Yes. Okay. Do you have cream or half and half or any milk with it? No. Just by itself. Just by itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you can have cream, you can add some heavy cream to it that'll add some dietary fat. Also add some walnuts to it. And then probably the best fruit to add to that is blueberries, maybe strawberries. Uh, if you want to spice it up, put some cinnamon spice on it. Cinnamon spice is okay? Oh yeah. Awesome. You want to use your aren't, spices. I was going to say, aren't all spices oh, yes. okay? Yes, you want to use your spices to your oh, advantage. Oh, wait, you said cinnamon spice. See, I've got this like cinnamon and sugar thing Not that goes on Not cinnamon toast. sugar. No? Oh, well, you can come from that. <laughs> I, I come from a place of inclusion, but I, I feel like uh, this uh, sugar substitutes, I would stay away from. That's just my personal belief. I think if you're going to do sugar, do raw sugar, real sugar, cane sugar, honey, but just stay away from the sugar substitutes. So there's there's a lot of uh, unknown issues with those. Okay. All right. I can do this for breakfast. Okay. Okay. And then she needs to eat a couple hours after her breakfast. So it, are you, you say that snacks you're supposed to have. Well, okay. Mini she meals. needs to have a, a mini meal when she's hungry again. Right. Well, okay. But I also talk about, okay, the sporadic lifestyle, which I'm sure that you guys have. Yes. So that is my lifestyle too. But I have a chapter and I talk about the uh, office, you know, Monday through Friday lifestyle, yeah. the sporadic lifestyle, the on your go, like a sales type person mm -hmm. lifestyle. So you only need a mini meal if there's going to be four hours between your two regular meals. So like I wake up late, so I don't do a mini meal in the morning because there's not enough time. Mm -hmm. But if you're an early riser, then you need a mini meal in between. Now I'll have two mini meals in the late afternoon because I eat dinner late. I eat dinner like anywhere from 7 to 9 o'clock okay. at night. And what's so that mini debunks that myth of eating late at night, by the way. Okay. So what is a mini meal? A mini meal is just a smaller portion of either a regular meal that you've already had, maybe a leftover of just a smaller portion, or you can just create your own little... It's kind of like a snack, but I don't like the word snack because people think of those 100-calorie snacks that are almost all carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about here. So one mini meal that, are, that I've created is you take a cracker, you put some peanut butter on it, and you mash some raspberries, and you've got a mini meal right there. That's okay. <laughs> you know what's funny is she said 
a cracker, I'm like envisioning tub of peanut butter, <laughs> fruit, and a sleeve thing, of crackers. A sleeve of crackers. Well, it's a mini meal. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to eat what you feel that you need to eat. So you start out with one cracker. And then if you feel like that's not enough, you're still listening to your body. If it wants another one, then you do another one. You know, but a mini meal, if you're getting past three, that's not a mini meal anymore. That's you've turned it into a meal. <laughs> that's a meal. <laughs> it, now is it okay for your snacks not to include everything? Because like I'm a you know, at the office I'm mm -hmm. I'm busy throughout the day from pretty much the time I start till I leave. I don't have a lot of time. So my snacks are either like some carrots or a cucumber or an apple or a banana. It's it's a fruit or a vegetable. Mm -hmm. It's not I don't have all of those components. I would steer away from that. If, if I don't know if you noticed that when I was here, I was eating a cheese stick. So that has dietary fat and mm -hmm. protein and no carbs. Um, but I would have that before I would have a fruit or a vegetable by itself. By itself. Yes. But cheese really goes right to my thighs. Well, it's... <laughs> <laughs> You might want to check and see if that's really the case. Oh. What could be going to my thighs if it's not pizza. the cheese? <laughs> yeah, it depends on what it's you're doing with the cheese. It's the pizza that the cheese is on. If you're doing the pizza with the cheese, that could probably be the problem. But I'm not having pizza very often. Your body really needs dietary fat and protein. It's so, so important. And if you're only having fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it depends on what kind of fruits and vegetables there are. You know, fruits and vegetables like coconuts and avocados uh, that do have dietary fat. There's also spinach that has protein. But the ones that you just mentioned, those are uh, just carbohydrates. Okay, let's get to um, number two on the timer diet concept. You need to write down every time you eat. Quantities and other details are not important. Correct. So just write down eight mini meal time. That's it. Okay, so like in this particular case, a uh, mini meal was crackers, peanut butter, raspberries. Uh, so you could put that down uh, if you had an egg, uh, Canadian bacon toast. Now you're not saying that you ate the whole thing, you're not saying that you didn't, but it doesn't really matter because you should have only eaten to the point that you were satisfied, so that isn't really the issue. So you put what you ate, you just not what, how much. Correct. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, and then also number five is you may eat right before you go to bed. Cheddar cheese and saltine crackers is best. Yes. That's really interesting. Yes. The cheese and crackers. That, right. Yeah, so, why is that? Well, I don't know scientifically, I mean, because I'm not a science a scientist, but there has been some talk about the dairy product, you know, helping you get, you know, into that sleepy mode. Um, and then there's also the crunch, you know, gets rid of the boredom. You want to have a well-balanced, you know, little teeny meal before. And I've just found from my own experience, because I have tried other things to eat before bed, but that just seems to do the trick. How many? So how many? When, Again, she does the till you're I know, but satisfied. I want to know what she does. <laughs> every, every day is different. Every you know, and it, it depends too. If I've eaten late at night, like say I did at nine o'clock, I probably won't need to eat right before I go to bed because it's only going to be a couple hours. But if I am hungry, I'll start out with one, and then if that doesn't do the trick, you know, two. If my stomach's growling, I know that I need at least two or three. I think I can do this. You can do it. it. It's your diet. It's your habitual nourishment. It's the food. See, that my you habitual love. nourishment is a piece of bread. Let me rephrase that: uh, a loaf of a bread. A loaf of bread. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. When I when I go to the grocery, I'm store, hungry. Where is that loaf of bread? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like, I can kill an entire loaf of bread, and people are looking at me like, "Where's mine?" I'm like, "I don't know. Where's your loaf?" This <laughs> mine. Well, if it's with olive oil or like you know the, the stuff that you can dip it in olive oil, oh my, yeah, I could do the same thing. And if a it's loaf of bread. warm, if it's just come out of the came over oh my gosh right. when I'm at the grocery store and they have that hot fresh I'm like oh, Lord help me I feel like I just interrupted her in the middle of like an orgasm or something <laughs> did you see her face her face when she's talking about this bread the warm bread and it's coming out of the oven I'll have what she's having <laughs> what is that Harry what is that Sally, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes bread okay, well now you know that your bread is the carbs and you need to add some dietary fat and protein because if you think about it how hard is it to overeat steak 
it's very hard to overeat steak. There's actually, you know, companies that bank on you not doing it because they'll give you $100 <coughs> or your free meal if you can overeat the steak and you can't do it. So I can have the bread as long as I have the steak or something, you know, chicken, I don't know, add something that's got dietary fat and protein to your bread. But not a loaf of bread. Not a loaf of bread, <laughs> but again, you're going to be, and that actually is a good point. Okay, so you want to eat until the point that you're satisfied. You have on your plate everything, the dietary fat, the protein, and the carbs. You can't just eat the carbs and say, well, I had the dietary fat and the protein on my plate, right. but I didn't eat it. So you need to eat proportionately. And what do you think about smaller plates? Oh, that worked for me. I find that when I put it on, because, you know, visually, we're visual right. people, so you have this big plate, and so you're dishing things out, and right. you feel like you need to fill the plate up. You know, I found if I use a smaller plate and just fill that up, that my mind is saying, okay, I ate. Yes. You know? I, I think there is something to that, and I talk about that in Chapter 4 before you start in one of it. The things I talk about is getting your kitchen ready, making sure you have all the gadgets, making sure you've cleaned out your refrigerator, your freezer, and all that. But if you are at the point where you are thinking about getting any dishes, you want your dishes to be pleasant. You want to enjoy looking at the dishes. You want to have different sizes. And you want to have some space. You don't want it to be full so you've used such a small plate that you can't, you know, see the plate, but you want to have plates in different sizes and bowls in different sizes so that when you have that ice cream, you have a little bowl and you feel like it's a good amount. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I do want to um, share, because we're talking about the things that have worked, something that has worked really well with me, when you go to these networking events and they have dessert, I will, okay, I'm not doing this right now, I'm yeah. saying something that I've done in the past that works well. <laughs> I will have a few bites of it and then instead of letting that dessert continue to sit there in front of me, I'll take my coffee, I'll take my water and I'll pour it on there <laughs> so that I can't, so it becomes soup. Right. So I'm no um, longer going to pick at it. I put the napkin. That's a good idea. I See, I'll, I'll lift it. underneath the, it. I would lift yeah. under the napkin. I would still. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I put the napkin it. there and I push it away because I'm the same way. If I see it, I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to keep eating. No, those are great. Well, this has been wonderful. Um, I can't wait to get the book myself because I really think that this is something that I can do. I encourage everyone, go to the website, timerdiet.com. All of her social media um, uh, links are right there. Blogs, you've got some phenomenal information. I really want everyone to go there, check in, look through all the information she has. She has a wealth of knowledge and buy the book. You can buy it right through Archway Publishing from the website timerdiet.com and if you've been watching us online you've seen her uh, her website right there at the bottom and you can also get it at Amazon Barnes and Noble and there's a link to Amazon on my website too. excellent yeah because you can it. Kindle it is available on Kindle I I, I did and buy it so. the audio book just came out a week and a half ago oh there's no excuses yes and I, I linked I linked you all through the Facebook uh, share the page and everything so they can go straight from the right. no limits page or the vets on media page yeah. so you can find it anywhere excellent excellent go to awesome. audible thank you um Sherry Sue Fisher author of Timer Diet. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you. it. We will be back in two minutes. I'm Christina. And I'm Michelle. And this is No Limits Radio.